In this video, we're going to talk about growth and decay problems. And in particular, we're going to talk about when to use each of these formulas. Now, there is a lot of overlap, meaning you can use this formula down below or this formula here in the middle for a particular problem. But I'm going to talk about which formula is ideally suited for each particular problem. I like to use this version in white. This says the amount of a substance or the amount of a population it, after a given time t equals the initial amount times 1 plus or minus r raised to that duration of time. You often will see the shorthand version as shown here in pink y equals a. Now y is the amount, a is the initial amount, and the rest is just the same. But I like using a of t. It makes me cognizant of the fact that this is the amount present or the population present after the time t. Now let's talk about t. t in these problems is the time of observation the time of the duration of the problem. So for example, if they give you a problem and they say, what's the population after 20 years? The 20 years refers to this time. What these T's don't refer to are as follows, doubling time, tripling time, or half-life. These are totally different, and these do not refer to the duration of the observation. That is why I do not like this particular version that I've written down here. I prefer to use x here, like so. And this x is a complex that consists of the duration time divided by n, where n refers to the doubling time, the tripling time, or the half-life. So as we go through these problems, you will see that when we talk about the time, it's the time of observation. When you talk about the doubling time or half-life, we need to put that in the denominator beneath the duration time. In our first problem, we are told that in the year 2000, the population was 737,000, and it's increasing at a rate of 1.52% per year. Create an equation that fits this model. Okay, folks, whenever you see this, whenever you see a percentage like so, what you want to do is you want to use this formula on top. So let me go ahead and write that in. A of t is going to equal the initial amount 1 plus or minus r raised to the t. Now r is considered the growth rate or the rate of change. In this case it's a growth rate. You want to take the decimal form of the percentage they give you. Now let's look at the symbol percent. It stands for per cent. Well per in math is a fraction line. For example, you make $12 per one hour, or a car gets 32 miles per gallon. Okay, so whenever you see that percent symbol, the first thing you do is you remove it and you replace it with per, which is a fraction line, and then 100. And indeed, cent is Latin for 100, as in century, being 100 years. Okay, so now that we have what formula we're going to use, we're going to take this percent, 1.52 percent. We're going to take the percent sign away, and we're going to divide by 100. Whenever you're dividing by something, we know that a number is going to get smaller. So we know that that decimal place has to move to the left. I like to put dummy zeros in here because I don't like moving the decimal place into blank space. And if we move it once, twice, 
we're going to have an R value equal to 0 0.0152. Folks, this is referred to as the rate of change per unit time. And when we add the 1 to it, it becomes what's known as the growth factor. So here we're going to have A of T equals the initial amount. 1 plus 0 0.0152 is 10152 raised to the T. This is called the growth factor. And this is called the growth rate per unit time. And in this case, it's per year. Okay, now that we have our equation, we can answer the question that they give us. We know that the initial value was 737,000. So A of T is going to equal 737,000 times 1.0152T. That's our equation. That's your full equation. Now, part two. At this rate, when will the population reach 1 million? So I outlined the word when. Whenever you're doing word problems, look for key words that inform you what you're looking for. So if they say when will something happen, that means they want the T value. And they want to know when the population will reach 1 million. So what we'll do here is we're going to replace A of T with A of, we don't know what that is. And that amount is going to be 1 million. By we don't know, meaning we don't know what that time is. So we're going to have 1 million equals 737,000 times 1.052 raised to the T. And we are trying to find that T value. Okay, let's make some room. I'm going to do the math on the first problem, maybe the first couple of problems. But after that, I'm just going to go right to the answer, and then you could do the calculations on your own. Okay, let's just get a little bit more room here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, folks, is we're going to divide both sides by 737,000. These three zeros go away. So that goes away and becomes 1. And we end up with 1.35685 equals 1.052 raised to the t power. Next, we're going to do the natural log of both sides. So we're going to do the natural log of 1.35685 equals the natural log of 1.052 raised to the t power. Then we're going to take advantage of the property of logs, which means you could take the exponent from the argument and bring it out front. So in essence, we're going to get t times ln of 1.052 equals ln of 1.35685 we're going to divide both sides by ln of 1.052. ln, of course, is calculator friendly. That's why we use it. Uh, OK, and when you do all that and you put that in the calculator, you will get here in pink that the time that will take is 20.0. 229 years. In this next problem, we are told that the half-life of a radioactive substance is 10 days. There are 3.6 grams present initially. Create an equation that fits the model as a function of t. First thing that you have to recognize is that that 10 days has nothing to do with these t's right there. We're going to call 10 days, which is the half-life, n. OK, 
Okay, very important. T is the duration time. 10 days has to do with how many days it takes for one half of the substance to be present. All right, so here's our equation. We can use, in this case, either the middle one or the bottom one. So let's start with the middle one first. We're going to have A of T equals the initial times one half. That's the B. That's the growth factor. Now, the X is going to consist of the duration of time divided by N. Let's, let's see why this makes sense. So let's say we had A of T equals our initial amount, they tell us, is 3.6 grams. One half is the growth factor, or in this case, the decay factor. And it's going to be the duration of time over 10 days. Okay, this is why the formula makes sense. Folks, if the duration time is 10 days, if t equals 10 days, that means we're going to employ this growth or decay factor of one half once. It makes total sense. That after 10 days, you're going to have half of the original substance. If your half-life is 10 days, 10 days go by, look what happens. If your duration is 10 days that you're looking at, you're going to have the decay factor of one half. 10 days is your duration. 10 days is also your N factor. That's the time it takes. That's the half-life. That means this goes to one. The one-half decay factor is applied only once. Suppose the duration time is 20 days. Then we're going to have this decay factor. There's the duration, the T, over the N. Now we're going to double I'm sorry, now we're going to take one half the amount twice. All right, so this is the correct equation as written, and now we're going to see what they want from us. At this rate, when will the amount of substance be one gram? So again, now they're looking for what duration will lead to an amount of one gram. So we don't know what that duration is. So we're talking about A of a time that we don't know equaling one gram. That's going to equal 3.6 times one half to the T that we don't know over 10. That's a T here. Let me erase that, make that more clear. That's the math we're going to do. So we only have one variable, and that's the t. And we're going to solve this just like we did the previous one, although I am not going to do the math here. All right, I'm just going to describe it. OK, so the first step is we're going to divide both sides by 3.6. And we're going to have natural log of 1 over 3.6 here. And we're going to take the, that's going to go away, and then we're going to end up having t over 10 times the natural log of 1 half. We're going to punch, uh, punch that in the calculator, punch this in the calculator, and then multiply both sides by 10. And when you do that, you're going to get a time, a duration time of 18.5. 479 days. Okay, folks, there's another way to do this. Another way to do this is to use the last formula, the E formula. So let's talk about how to do that. All right. I'm going to bring up the same problem here. Here's our formula we're going to use. A of T equals the initial times e to the kt. The whole idea when you're using this formula is to get the k and then use it in other parts of the problem. So what do we know? We know that after 10 days, this amount goes to one half. 
So after 10 days, you're going to have one half of a sub zero. That allows us to find the K. This cancels out, and now we're down to one equation and one unknown. I'm going to change 1 half to 0.5 equals e to the 10k. We're going to take the natural log of both sides. We're going to have ln of 0.5 here equals ln, as you know, that's a base e of e to the 10k. Whenever you have the base of the log matching the base of the argument, they cancel out and you're left with the exponent. So you're going to have ln of 0.5 equals 10k. And when you do your math, you are going to find out that your k value equals negative 0 0.0693147. Now, folks, this k value is very sensitive. So if you round this off and you just use negative 0.07, your answer is going to deviate significantly from what your teacher expects you to get on your homework or your quiz. So as cumbersome as it is, I recommend you take this out to at least four, maybe five decimal places like I've done here. Okay, now we're going to use this K value in subsequent portions of any given problem. So now we're going to say when when is the amount one gram? So one gram is the amount we're going to be looking for. We're starting with 3.6 grams. We're going to have e to the negative 0 0.069314. And it makes sense that that k value is negative because we have a decay problem going on. We're going to divide both sides by 3.6, then we're going to take the natural log of both sides, and we're going to divide by this hideous k number, and we are going to get 18.479. Same answer we got the first time. In the next example, we find that a single cell amoeba, amoeba doubles every five days. How long will it take for the population to reach 1,500? So again, no mention of percentages in terms of the growth rate. If that were the case, we'd be using the first equation. Okay, two ways we can do this, e either the middle or the bottom equation. Let's do the middle first. <clears throat> so we're going to have... A of T equals initial E, I'm sorry, we wanted to do the middle one first, B to the X, and recall the X is going to be the duration of time over the N value. Our growth factor is double, so we're going to use two. So we're going to say that our A of T A of t is going to equal the initial amount. Our factor is a doubling factor of time over five days. Our initial number of amoebas is just one. So we're going to replace that with just one. And we want to find out when that population will be 1,500. So we're going to have 2 or raised to the t over 5. We're going to take the ln of both sides. We're going to bring this out in front. And eventually we're going to get a time of 52.754 days. The other way to do this, folks, is to use e, find the k value, and then use that in part 2 of the problem. So we have a of t equals a sub naught e to the k t. We know that the doubling time is five days. 
So after five days, we're going to have twice the initial amount. The A sub naught cancels out. We're going to get 2 equals E to the 5K. We're going to take the natural log of both sides, and we're going to get a K value of 1.38. 629. Note that it's positive because we are in a growth situation. Now we're going to use that k value in part two of the problem. So in part two, they want to know when is the a of t at 1500. We start with just one amoeba and we're going to have 1.38 six two nine times t we're going to take the natural log of both sides and we're going to get the same exact answer next we are told that a colony of bacteria is growing exponentially after three hours there are a thousand bacteria after five hours there are four thousand Write a formula for the population growth, and by what percentage does the number of bacteria increase each hour? Okay, so whenever we're looking for a percentage growth per unit time, we're going to be using one of these two formulas, the first or the second. So I'm going to go ahead and use the second one, and I'm going to use the shortened version, y equals ab to the x. And in this case, our n is going to equal 1 because they're looking for the growth rate for each year, or each hour, excuse me. So we're going to use these two data points that when the time equals 3, we have 1,000 bacteria. So that means you're going to have 1,000 bacteria. We don't know how much we start with. We don't know the growth factor, but we do know that that was after three hours. And on our second equation is going to be very similar, except it's going to be 4,000 equals a, b to the fifth. So now, folks, we have two equations, two unknowns, and we're going to solve for both a and b. So... It's very interesting. When you have equations set up like this, you can actually divide them. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation here and we're going to put it under here and we're going to divide them. All right, so watch how this works. We're going to divide the two equations. The a's cancel out. 4,000 over 1,000 is 4. And then you're going to have 4 equals b to the 5th over b to the 3rd, otherwise known as b squared. Therefore, b is going to equal 2. Now, we know that the square root of 4 is plus or minus 2, but we also know that there's growth going on here, so that that b is going to be positive 2. Besides, in an exponential equation, you can't have a negative base. So we're going to throw that out. Okay, so we know that b equals 2. So what we're going to do now is plug in b equals 2 to one of these equations to get our a value. So let's use the smaller of the two. So we're going to have 1,000 equals a times 2 cubed. And we're going to end up with A equals 1,000 divided by 8. And therefore, our A value is going to equal 125. Okay, so creating the equation, if our B is 2 and our A is 125, we're going to have Y equals 125 2 to the t. Let's just use t because the n value is 1. All right. Now, if you compare this equation to 1 plus r to the t, then you know that 2 equals 1 plus r 
So therefore, the R value has to equal 1. So in this case, we're going to go backwards, and we're going to say 1 equals what percent? 1 equals x per 100. Therefore, x equals 100%. We have a lake that is currently 31 feet deep. However, due to hot weather, the depth of the lake is decreasing at a rate of 7% each week. How deep will the lake be in 10 weeks? Okay, as soon as you see percent, you know you're going to be using that first equation. So here we go. Our equation is going to be A of t equals the initial times 1 minus r because we're losing depth raised to the t. The r value is going to equal 7% which is 0 0.07. You always want to use the decimal version. And we are starting at 31 feet. So we have 31 feet, we're going to have 1 minus 0 0.07 raised to the t, which we, we do not, actually I take it back, the t is going to be 10 weeks. We do know the duration. Okay, so a of t is going to equal 31 times 0.93 raised to the 10th power. So let's go ahead and do that quickly on the calculator. So we're going to have 0.93 raised to the 10th power equals, and then times 31 equals a depth of 15 feet. Okay, one last problem. A club currently has 100 members. The membership is increasing at a rate of 8% per year. How many members will be present in five years? That percent right there is going to draw us right to that first equation. So we're going to have the amount of members is going to be a sub 0 times 1 plus r. Our r is going to be 8% or 0 0.08, and it's going to be raised to the t. So our new amount is going to be the initial amount, which is 100, times 1.08. And after five years, if you do the math, you will have 147 members. So folks, in summary, when you look at these formulas, <clears throat> if you see percent involved, you're going to use that first formula. If you see words like doubling or tripling, then you're going to use 2 or 3 as the growth factor. However, you have to remember to divide by n. So if they say it doubles every two weeks, you have to put a 2 underneath the duration that we're talking about. So if you have a 10-week duration and the doubling time is two weeks, then this growth factor of two will be applied for a total of five times. Finally, if you have continuous growth, com continuous compounding interest, that's when you use E. And in those cases, you get the K value. You use what they give you to get the K value and then you subsequently use the k-value in other parts of the word problem. In this next example, we're told that 2 milligrams of a drug is injected and metabolized, and that the amount of drug decreases at a continuous rate of 4% per hour. Folks, what makes this problem different is the word continuous. I know if you see that 4%, you're tempted to use the 1 plus or minus r formula, but continuous tells us that we have to get E involved. So we're going to have A of T equals A initial times E to the KT. Now, unlike previous examples where they give us 
data and we find the K, here they're giving us the K. And we know that K has to be negative if it's a decreasing situation. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the decimal version of 4%, which is uh, 0 0.04. So we're now going to have as the formula a sub t equals the initial 2 milligrams e to the negative 0 0.04 t. Okay, that was part one of the equation, of the uh, problem, I'm sorry, was find the formula. Part two is by what percent does the drug decrease each hour? So if we plug in one hour here, we're going to have e to the negative 0 0.04 times 1, this is going to be the factor by which you're multiplying the original amount. And if you plug in e to the negative 0 0.04 in your calculator, which by the way, on the iPhone calculator, you have to use the normal configuration of the of the iPhone calculator, which I think we're going to call portrait, and hit the plus minus button to enter 0 0.04, and then rotate the iPhone to the horizontal position and use the e to the x button. When you do that, you find that e to the negative 0 0.04 is going to equal 0.04. 96079. So each hour, this is what's being multiplied by the original amount. And you could see, because this number is less than 1, this number is getting decreased each hour. Now we ask ourselves, if we had started 100%, we're now being multiplied by 0.96. We're going to have to subtract 100% minus this amount, and that yields 0.03921, and the percentage version of that is 3.921%. That's the amount it decreases each hour. So to review, <clears throat> the formula has, uh, excuse me, the word problem has the word continuous in. That's an indication we have to use the E. They gave us the K value. We figured out that this is the factor that's being multiplied each hour. That indicates a decrease of this amount, which is 3.921%. Finally, when will the amount reach 0.25 milligrams? So in that situation, we don't know the time, but we have everything else. And we just have to plug in 0.25 here because that's the amount that we're aiming for. Now we, we have one equation, one unknown. And the way we would solve that is first divide by 2. So we have 0.25 divided by 2 equals 0 0.96079 to the t. And then we would take the natural log of both sides. So we would have here in yellow <coughs> the natural log <coughs> of 0.25 divided by 2, which we can do in a calculator, is going to equal t times the natural log of 0 0.96079, <clears throat> excuse me, and when you plug that in a calculator and that in a calculator and then divide, you will have a time of 51.99 hours as the time it would take for the concentration to reach 0.25 milligrams. In this next problem, we're asked to find the equation of the exponential function whose graph passes through these two points. So folks, we're going to use this technique. We're going to do y equals a times b to the x for each of these two points. 
and then we're going to divide the equations. Okay, so for the first one, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to have 200 equals a b to the negative 30. And for the second one, we're going to have 60 equals a times b raised to the 20th power. Then we're going to go ahead and divide these two equations. So we're going to bring this down below and divide these. And when we do that, we're going to have 3.33. Don't forget, these a's cancel out. We'll come back and figure out a in a minute. 3.33 3, 3 equals b to the negative 50th power. Now, whenever you have a base to a negative exponent, you could flip the base and change the exponent to a positive. So we're going to take this. We're going to change this to 3.33 equals 1 over b to the 50th power. And then we're going to use the power rule and recognize that 1 to any power is still 1. And we're going to end up with 3.33 equals 1 over b to the 50th power. Now, whenever you're in this situation, you can literally swap these two. So now we're left with b to the 50th power equals 3.33. So we're going to take the 50th power of 3.33, and when we do that, we get a b value equal to, the b value is going to equal 0.9762. Now we can use one of these two equations to get our a value. Let's use the one without the uh, negative exponent. So we're going to come back and let's do some erasing here. Thank you for your patience. And we're going to have next that 60 is going to equal A. And we're going to have B now as 0 0.9762 raised to the 20th power. So when we put this in our calculator, and then we place that underneath the 60 and divide. Our final answer is going to be as follows. We're going to have that y equals 97.1187. Here's our base, which was the b value, raised to the x. Next, we are asked to express the exponential function y equals 7 times 1.23 raised to the x power in the form y equals ae raised to the kx power, and then identify the growth factor and the continuous growth rate. Okay, so let me go ahead and rewrite this. Um, basically, we're converting from y equals a b to the x to y equals a e to the kx. So folks, if we pattern match here, we notice that this b, which is the growth factor, is matched with e to the k. So in this particular example, we see that the growth factor, the b value, is 1.23, and that's going to equal e to the k. So we can answer what the growth factor is. The growth factor is always the base, and the continuous growth rate, that word continuous, is associated with e. The continuous growth rate would be k. So what we need to do here is take the natural log of both sides to get our k value. 
and these cancel out and k is going to equal the natural log of 1.23 and the natural log of 1.23 is 0.207014 so folks that is your k value so if you were going to rewrite this equation you would keep the same a value which is 7 Let's do it over here in red. So we would have y equals 7 times e to the 0.207014x. And its growth rate is going to be this k value, which is 0.207014, and if we were had to do that as a percentage, it would be 20.70%.